Hello, my name is Wade Nomura, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. Each year we take a look at what happens during the holiday season, specifically uh, New Year's, and we have the large Rotary Rose Parade Float Committee getting together with the Tournament of Roses each year. What's unique about this opportunity is that we also have, at that same time, members of the Rotary Club. We have Lions there, we have Kiwanis, and we have the Optimus Groups, all in attendance for this parade. What we did was we took a look at it. When I say we, the Rotary Rose Parade Folk Committee, took a look at how we could benefit by getting all these people together. So each year we host what's called the International President's Summit, which is a brunch held this year at the Huntington Library. And this special occasion brings together all four organizations, the president of Lions, the president of Kiwanis, the president of Optimus, and of course the president of Rotary International. They get together and we host them for a one-time brunch where they get together individually in a locked room and they talk about anything and everything they want to, including how the organizations are doing, the health of those, changes that occur, and some of the best practices that are happening within each and every one of these groups. Now, if you think about it, one of the opportunities that we have with this group of four international presidents, we are bringing together the largest group ever of humanitarian clubs in the world to take a look at how we can improve on that. And what's unique about this opportunity also is the fact that each president changes yearly, annually, and they bring different ideas, different concepts, different ways that they could organize together. What's come out of this uh, summit is that now we are looking at ways for the group, uh, the group of four, could actually get together, organize, and create a service project that would happen worldwide, possibly on one given day, where all four groups, the Optimists, the Lions, the Kiwanis, and Rotary, would host a one-day huge international project. Now think about that. With Rotary being 1.2 million members, the Lions being 1.5 million members, Optimus being close to a million, and the Kiwanis also being close to a million people. Could you imagine what the impact of that would have on the world today? So this is what we're doing and one of the ways we could benefit. I'd like to share with you, first of all, some of the pictures that I took during this event. The first picture shows the four presidents getting together, and this is in the, the closed room where they're in closed session. We snuck in and took a picture of them after the event, and uh, the picture shows the four presidents actually getting together to talk about different things, everything from social aspects to all of the above. The next picture was uh, Jane, Jane Erickson, who's the president of Kiwanis, actually brought with her a little mascot. And that mascot, she says, she's taking with her all over the world. And so she asked all of the presidents if they would be willing to take a picture with her using this, uh, the mascot, which, of course, they were very happy on doing. The next picture that we have shows a picture of uh, the presidents back in session with their spouses. And we include the spouses. We also include the executive staff of each of the organizations. Now, Lions, Kiwanis, and uh, Rotary all have a float. The one that doesn't is the Optimus Club, which we hope someday soon they will be able to participate in. But if you look at it, all four, uh, three of the four presidents actually ride on the float themselves. And so this is a big deal. They come together, they, uh, they host this thing, but there's very seldom where they will actually get together as a group of four. And by the way, this is the only time these four organization presidents will ever get together during the course of a year. Um, and this is all brought to us by the Rotary Rose Parade Float Committee. The next picture I have is a picture showing the presidents in the foreground along with uh, the Rotary Rose Parade Float Committee staff in charge of actually running this event, the committee. We have Dave Cardenas to the left in the back, Next to him is Joe Ramos, uh, and then that's myself there. Uh, Gene Hernandez will be the other one, and then we have Larry Skaggs and Frank Griffith. Now, Frank Griffith is the one that actually is uh, pretty much the organizer. He's the one that puts all of this together. Him and his wife do an outstanding job. Uh, Dave Cardenas, who's on the left, also works with me to do this event. And I will tell you this, it's every year is successful. Um, it's amazing how common we work together with each of these four organizations. The goals, the objectives, all seem to mirror each other. And so because of that, we see the, I would say, the ability to then bring these groups together to create synergy. 
And that synergy ideally someday will be able to create something even greater and stronger than each of the individual organizations. I also had a chance and opportunity to interview each and every one of those at, at a podium. And so the presentations that I'm going to be showing you now in video will be each of the four presidents and some of the feedback that occurred after they had their, um, their closed session meeting. First up, we have Jane Erickson. Jane Erickson, again, is the president of Kiwanis International. She's from Nebraska. And by the way, her float was immediately next to the Rotary Rose Parade float. So we get, had a lot of time to share. Uh, Jane was one of those very bubbly ladies, and she was one day actually working on a float pretty much by herself. Uh, she was asking what happened to all the volunteers. And because of meetings like this, Rotary and the Rotary volunteers all jumped on the Kiwanis float to help finish that float off. So um, again, here's, here's Jane. Oh my goodness, it is wonderful to be able to be here to represent our organization, an organization that has become so important in my life, personally. I'm a 26-year Kiwanian. I met my husband through Kiwanis. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> Still good. <laughs> Guess and I met 24 years ago, and our 20th wedding anniversary was uh, two weeks ago. So we have a lot to be thankful for in Kiwanis. As an organization, a worldwide organization in 83 nations that really concentrates on improving the lives of children, knowing that by improving the lives of children, we improve communities. This year we have chosen to energize the dream, and that dream is that every child be happy, healthy, safe, and loved. Because it's our desire to make certain that every child in the world wakes up in the morning and knows they live in a community where there are people there who love them, nurture them, give them what they need, and help them thrive. That's what we're all about. We are blessed to be able to be here. Our California, Nevada, Hawaii governor, Pete Edwards. Some of you have already met Pete and his first lady, Jeanette. We love hanging out with you, seeing all the possibilities for our kiddos here in this area. It's very powerful. And of course, most of you have met my first gent, Gus Erickson. First in the world. First in all my Good job, Gus. That's good. As we energize that dream, we know that dreams help really spark imagination for children and really help them grow in resiliency. And so we want to protect that dream as we protect our children. First and foremost, anything we do for children improves our communities. So thank you for the opportunity to be here. We know that working together, having that meeting this morning was wonderful, meeting the other three. Actually, I've known a couple of you, and so we're working together. Because we truly believe that as we begin to collaborate our organizations together, that's where the power comes from. That's where the magic begins. If instead of com competing with each other, we begin to collaborate, we can have a much more powerful force for good in the world. And then it becomes us, as a collective organization, competing against the evils right now in our world, working against children. I want to tell you just very quickly, our youngest grandchild, our little girl who is nine, said to me one day, she was a very happy little kid and she was very cloudy that day and she said, the world is not a happy place anymore for kids. It's not a safe place anymore for kids. How are us kids going to know the good guys? And as I hesitated, she looked up and saw my Kiwanis pen, she saw my Kiwanis shirt and said, I know, I'll make a big K for Kiwanis, and that way, everywhere you go, the kids will know you're one of the Kiwanis good guys. <laughs> and I thought, out of the mouths of babes. <laughs> Isn't that true? So, as we work together as Rotary and Lions and Optimists and Kiwanians, we work together to be that powerful force for good in the world. We begin to energize the dream that every child is happy, healthy, safe, and loved. Thank you for giving us this opportunity Oh my goodness, we are looking forward to the Rose Parade on Monday and looking forward to having all of this help as we go through. Thank you. Thank you. So I hope you got to see a little bit of Jane in action there. Um, actually, with the uh, interview portion of that, she was fairly reserved. I guess she was using her president's face. Um, 
normally and when we saw Jane actually in person, she had a lot of personality to her and we enjoyed every minute of spending time with her. Um, actually, we took her out, uh, had dinner uh, together with her and worked on her float. Uh, all in all, one great, great lady. The next interview I have is with uh, Bob Corlew, and Bob Corlew is the president of uh, Lions International. One thing unique about Bob, um, he shared this with me, is that him and John Germ, president of Rodeo International, at the same time, have been childhood friends. They go way back, and because of that, they never imagined that the two of them would be sharing the same year as international presidents. And with that, let's go ahead and take a look and see what Bob had to say. Thank you so much. It's such a joy to have the opportunity to be with you today. My wife Diane and I have had such a wonderful time here already. Lions International, of course, is celebrating our 100th anniversary this year. We're celebrating our centennial, and our theme this year is New Mountains to Climb. To us, those new mountains are not obstacles. They're not just pieces of dirt, but those, uh, those mountains, in fact, present new opportunities, new opportunities for us, us to serve more people in more ways. Lions, of course, has been working for a number of years in our sight projects. We help those who are visually impaired. We also are working also in many of our youth programs and projects, and we have a program to feed the hungry and a, an extensive program <clears throat> to improve our environment. Lions also has a program to help those who read poorly. Our theory is that many people don't read well and because they do not read well, they are prohibited from getting jobs that otherwise they could obtain to better feed their families and better take care of themselves and their children. We as Lions this year have three major goals or three major areas during our centennial. We are working hard, first of all, to serve more people in more ways. We had a what we call a uh, centennial uh, service challenge where we uh, picked a number of people that we would positively influence during our entire centennial, and the Lions jumped all over that and reached that goal in less than a year. So we are uh, working hard now on what we call legacy projects, which are projects which are long-lasting, uh, perhaps buildings, perhaps uh, uh, parks and, and other things where the lion symbol will be there and be a tribute to the service that we do. We're also working in leadership because of our theory that in fact stronger leaders make stronger clubs and stronger clubs can do more to help our communities. Our third area of course is membership and our reason for getting more members is because with each new person who joins our organization, there are two new hands that are there to serve the community and to do more to make our world better. I'm honored today to have the privilege to, to be here, of course, with all of you from uh, all of these other organizations, and I, I don't say these in any order for any reason, but my uh, friends from Optimist, from Lions, and from Rotary, uh, our, our extreme privilege to, uh, to be with you and to work so hard uh, together with you. We did have such a productive meeting this morning. I think uh, uh, truly, and I guess maybe I should speak for myself, but uh, I, uh, I think we all enjoyed each other's company. Uh, we had a great meeting. Uh, we all are of the same heart and the same mind. And uh, that really is, is a tribute because we're not four individual organizations. We are service leaders who are here together wanting to make our world better. I want to be sure I introduce my wife, otherwise I'll hear about it later. <laughs> this is Diane, she's from Nashville, Tennessee. I'm honored today also to have two uh, international directors with us. One is a currently serving international director, Howard Hudson and his wife Lynn are here with us. And uh, our immediate past international director, uh, Larry Dykus, and his wife Jane, and thanks to them. And we have some other lions here from California, including our uh, publicity director. And uh, Lion Howard, can I impose on you or Larry one to introduce our California friends? Because I'm going to mispronounce names. <laughs> this is Alice Tanna. 
And Alice, uh, Alice handles our PR. And thank you so much. Does a great job. And we have her husband, Yaz, who is both a um, lion and a Rotarian. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have Manny Sanchez, who is our current district governor for this area. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and Jim, don't worry, uh, our, our friend who is both a lion and a uh, Rotarian, I did offer to him both a uh, optimist application and a Qantas application. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for the service that you provide. Thank you so much for your very warm hospitality while we've been here. And let's keep that Rose Parade going, all right? Yeah! So I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, Bob, by the way, uh, is also from Tennessee, as in John. And uh, one of the kidding parts that they always seem to be uh, giving each other a hard time about is that one of them, specifically, was um, from the mountains. Was, was, was a mountain boy from Tennessee, and the other one was actually somebody from the city. So uh, I wanted to share that with you because uh, I have yet to figure out which one was which on each one of those, uh, those jokesters. Next up, we have uh, Jim Condrasack. Jim is from the Optimist Club and is from Wisconsin. So here you go. This is Jim. Good afternoon, everybody. I am very privileged and proud to be here um, with my peers from the other service organizations. We, had a, we did have a great meeting. I wouldn't even begin to count the years of service that I represented just in this room of giving back to our youth, to our communities, and actually to ourselves because by serving others we do, we do help ourselves. I would like to also just, um, there's three programs that are near and dear to my heart from the Optimist organization. We all do great programs, but three that are very special. One is our oratorical contest. This is our oldest running program, started in 1928. This year we expanded it to the World Oratorical Contest and we had contestants from 19 other countries. And for this year, for the oratorical, for the essay contest, and we sponsor a communication contest for the deaf and hard of hearing, we awarded over $550,000 in scholarships. That's on an annual basis. So that, that's number one. Uh, number two is before this year, I haven't had the opportunity to attend our youth, our junior world golf tournament. <coughs> And I did this year, I was there with the youngest group, which is girls ages 10 through 12 and boys ages 10 through 13. And I don't golf, so this doesn't mean a lot to me, but there were three holes in one of that group on there, and about a half a dozen or more had scores of 69 for 18 holes, and I, I, I understand that's pretty good. <laughs> the other thing I, I uh, found out is that this golf tournament, with the qualifying rounds, means that over 5,000 youth participate. And I was told that makes it the largest youth golf tournament in the world. And we do have people from all over the world. It did end up with a Optimist Club being formed in Thailand because of the, of the golf tourney. And the third thing I'm very proud of, of our organization is our youth organization called JOY, which is Junior Optimist International. We have 15,000 members uh, in the JOY organization, um, which is also something we're all very proud of. But I think what all of our service clubs do is, is just absolutely phenomenal. I don't know what our country would be like if they didn't have us to do what we do for our communities and for our youth. And again, the personal growth that comes with being involved in our, in our service clubs. I would like to recognize two people, especially first, we have a sitting director of Officer National, Mark Weinsoff, who's from California. Also, Jim Oliver, who is a past Officer uh, National Director and has been my host this weekend. And we've, we've gone from Southern California, um, this far north, I came in on Tuesday. Wednesday, we had a reception with the Cal South. And then yesterday, it was we had a reception with the wrong districts Pacific Southeast. Central <laughs> and Pacific, Pacific Southwest. And Pacific Southwest. South Pacific Southwest. And that was corrected by the governor of the Pacific Southwest, <laughs> um, Dana, and then also the governor from Pacific Southeast. Southeast. Okay, there we go. We have two of our governors that are here. So, um, again, it's a privilege and a pleasure to be here with you all. Um, it, it does my heart good to know what we do for our communities, because without us, I don't know what they would do. And we touch the lives of so many people. Our theme this year for the Optimist Organization is Together We Can, 
people like it, and everyone is working together, and we are making progress. So thank you all for what you do. It's a privilege and pleasure to be here, and I do love what I do. Thank you. So that was uh, Jim himself. Uh, now, Jim, by the way, was probably the most reserved of the bunch. I don't know if it was because he came from Wisconsin or not, or if he uh, was just a little intimidated. He does have the smaller of the four service uh, organizations. Next up, we have uh, John Germ, and John was there to actually wrap up the overall event and talk about what they were discussing and some of the future plans. With that, let's hear from John. Uh, let me first of all start out by introducing my wife, Judy, who was been with you this morning, so she's my traveling companion. My Ron and Vicki Bopian, uh, our aides, and Ron is from uh, Coronado, and he's a past director for Rotary International, so of course we have him. Rotary Serving Humanity. What better theme can someone have than the opportunity to say, what is it that all four of us as organizations do? We're all in the people business. We're all trying to serve humanity, whether it's by providing eyeglasses or golf tournaments or getting people involved. And one of the things that we talked about this morning was the opportunity to try to reach out to younger people to try to expand our organizations. Uh, you know, if we look around our organizations, we all know that we need additional people out there working because there are so many needs in all of our uh, communities. Rotary is in over 200 countries and geographic uh, regions. Uh, we have uh, are growing uh, this year. Uh, we're up about uh, 20,000 members so far this year. The United States is starting to turn around, and hopefully that all four of us can get together and make that happen. Our number one uh, priority project is obviously the eradication of polio. Uh, we've been working on that for several years. The first uh, drops were given to the children in the Philippines in 1979, and uh, it was proved to be a success. So then WHO, CDC, UNICEF all came on board, and we're right now spending about $1.2 billion a year uh, on uh, the eradication of polio. We started in 1985 with 350,000 uh, cases in 125 countries, uh, including the United States. And we're now down to 35 cases in three countries, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Nigeria. So we think we're going to get there. We're positive we are. And then all the children of the world will be able to, to be safe from only the second disease that's ever been eradicated from the face of the earth. We also have programs in the six areas of service, which includes water, sanitation. Uh, we're doing a lot of work in India because a lot of places over there in some of the third world countries the girls can't go to school because they don't have private bathrooms. Uh, so we're trying to do some of that. We're working in literacy, child and maternal health, economic development, and community improvement. All of that to say is we want to thank this committee for the work that you've done in putting this Rose Bowl parade together <coughs> because it does bring attention on national TV to all the work that the organizations do. And that's a unique opportunity. And if you watch the Home and Garden Channel, not to plug anybody specifically, they actually <laughs> film the whole parade. So you can watch the entire parade, and your float and activities will be seen, whereas if it's on ABC, CBS, or NBC, you may or may not be seen. We're celebrating 100 years of the Rotary Foundation. I know Bob and the Lions are going to celebrate 100 years as an organization. We did that in 2004 or 5 back in Chicago, and he's going to Chicago. We're celebrating 100 years of the Rotary Foundation, which says doing good in the world. And we're doing that in Atlanta. So you're all invited to Atlanta. It's going to be a big birthday party. And obviously, if we're spending $1.2 billion dollars a year with government and Rotary, and Rotary's putting up about 105 uh, million of that on an annual basis. We have a collection plate at the back of the room, because <laughs> every dollar helps. <laughs> Let me say on behalf of Rotary International, and the, certainly the committee that has worked hard to put this event together, thank you for being here. I know some of you have got some 
plane rides to catch and some things to do. But you vote. You came out today to share fellowship, to have some fun, and talk about how we can improve our organizations. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, that was from all of the four different international presidents. What's unique this year, and usually it doesn't happen, actually I've never seen this happen before, and that is, is that um, the presidents all came from the United States. We have Jane coming from Kansas, we have Bob coming from Tennessee, we had Jim coming from Wisconsin, and John also from Tennessee. Generally speaking, we'll get at least one, if not about 50% of the presidents coming from an international country. Um, I think the uniqueness of it this time is that we had a more cooperative effort. In other words, it is our hopes that what's going to happen with the future of this meeting is that some of these notes will be passed down to the next president because each and every one of these presidents change every year. So all four organizations we will see next year, all four new presidents. The president next year from Rotary International, Ian Rizio, will be coming from Australia. So we know for a fact that at least one of the presidents will be coming from a different country. What else we found unique about the situation this year is that Rotary International celebrates through the foundation 100 years of its foundation. Lions also celebrated 100 years of its existence. So if you take a look at those two organizations, you'll see that Rotary has been around a little bit longer, but um, let's see, it's 111 years now for Rotary, uh, 100 years for Lions Club, yet each and every one of these groups and all of the clubs around the world seem to focus on similar items. Each and every one of them work on serving their communities and also serving humanity. If you look at the Lions efforts, they are specific in their causes. If you look at um, Kiwanis, also the same, and Optimus, also the same. They have key objectives in working with humanity on specific focuses. Rotary itself started with polio. That's the number one effort right now is the eradication of polio as their effort. But if you look at what happens and how we could work this together, think about this. If each one of those were to focus on a specific area, the ones that they're doing right now, and had support from all of the other organizations, could you imagine what this world would be like? Uh, that would be truly amazing, astonishing. With that, what I'd like to share with you is this. It's the Rotary Rose Parade Float Committee that has brought these four organizations together each and every year. It used to be the only time, and when I say used to be, now um, these four groups of presidents plan on meeting at least one more time this year. This is the first time I've seen this happen. Hopefully this will be something that will be happening in the future. And with that, I'd like to share this with you because this is behind the scenes. We look at all the organizations. We should be proud of each and every one of those. Rotary seems to be leading the forefront um, with the organization of this group and organization, but the cooperative efforts of all four of these someday will come to fruition and we will see a much better world. And with that, thank you very much. Think about that and share those opportunities with all of the other members of Optimus, Lions, and Kiwanis. We're all in it together for the same reason. Thank you.